My name's Justin, and this is The Art of Repair. And if there are two little baby small hills I like to go around and die on all the time, I'd have to say it's probably low male alloy and what we're going to talk about today, preheaters. Let's just do this. All right, so I've got some real hardline opinions on preheaters, and I feel like I got some pretty logical reasons for it, right? And I think we just need to go ahead and just get all my little hating out of the way and talk about all this stuff before we get into the video because I think it's really important that you hear this stuff, okay? So number one, let's just talk about the preheater and what it's doing for a second. The preheater itself is heating up to a specific temperature and changing the baseline at which you work. You are taking away an ambient heat sink, you are freezing the thermal inertia, and you are making things easier on yourself. Now, with that being said, I see a lot of people using these on every little thing possible. Same as they're out there using low melt on everything because they're just trying to, you know, just, I don't know. Y'all know how I feel about low melt. Now, the deal here is, you can actually take your hot air station, right? And y'all know I'm all about that 140 degrees. I think it's a great, it's a great temperature to kind of like play around on the board at if you're trying to, trying to warm something up without actually getting close to the actual melting temperature, right? So going forward, we're just going to go ahead and say that's really what I use, but there is a way to derive different temperatures for different usages. We're going to talk about it here in a minute. Right? But we're talking about that hot air for a second and preheating. Right, You can take that hot air station, preheat the board to 140 degrees in the area in which you're working on, and you can still use your iron without having to, to lock it into some kind of like tool mechanism that's heating it up and doing this whole shebang. Right, It's a lot easier if you just don't pull this out first. Last resort, application specific. Okay, Pay attention to these words I'm telling you. I'm hating for a reason. I'm hating because I feel like you're just putting on some crutches. Okay? Now, I do believe that if you want to be a successful soldering expert as quickly as possible, that it's imperative that you learn how to do the soldering process with a standard hot air station and a standard iron before you move to any other kinds of, like, additive tools that are going to augment the situation because if your preheater goes out and you tell me you can't get the job done I promise you I promise you I'm going to have a, a real big opinion in like in that situation and you're going to know how I feel about it you know what I mean and you nobody wants to be in that situation so let us learn without the crutches but let us acknowledge because I've got to acknowledge this to myself that's why we're making the video that it's about time to talk about preheaters in the sense that the that there are more application specific scenarios in which this can help you and give you that third arm while you're doing your jobs and it's getting to the point with some things where you're using purely hot air where truly this will help i just don't think it's for every single repair i got that out of my system now Let's talk about preheaters. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you all some do's and don'ts and this, that's, and the thirds and things that I think real quick about making sure you get the right preheater first off. Um, this guy right here, you can see how thin he is. Okay, He's hooked up to a base unit over here, um, and he's, he's, he's nice and thin. There's a reason for that. If you listen to me talk about microscopes, then you have listened to me talk about calibration of your microscopes and the, the, the work area, the height of said areas and you'll realize really quickly if you've paid attention to any of that that oh my goodness there's two types of preheaters out there and one of them is way too big do not under any circumstances buy a fully one-piece unit preheater number one it's it's not really it's not very universal you know what i mean like for the most part it's all one built-in thing and at that point you know if, if if there's like an update to the actual designs of the boards you're working on you can't really can't really do much. You got to buy the electronics and you got to buy the top, you know, the, the the work area, right? So now we know. Well, let's get the short one because it'll work under the microscope better. And number two, 
the reason is you just want to make sure that you can actually like switch these out with a base unit so that you're not spending so much money on different full-on preheaters where they're taking the price. Now, hear me out here. They're taking the price, trying to compete, and give you that lower price because you're getting lower quality electronics overall. There's been big issues in the industry about just low quality preheaters hitting the market as all-in-one units, right? So now we know. Get the small one. That's definitely the way to go. You can all you can get all kinds of different shapes, sizes for different types of you know brands, motherboards, so on and so forth. And keep the one same unit just up in the top, right? Um, now we need to talk about what's actually happening with the preheater. Why is it called a preheater? Well, that's super simple. You're preheating the area to a certain temperature in what I would like to call your baseline, right? So if you are in your room right now and you've got uh, an ambient tension uh, an ambient temperature of like 70 degrees then your baseline is 70 degrees because as things cool down and and you know that that thermal inertia is taken over and it's like pushing into the room and trying to equalize out that it's going to be going down to that 70 degrees right but if you are using a preheater and let's just say you're set at 140 degrees centigrade and Calm down before you set yours to that. Maybe you're going to want to do something different. I'm going to explain that too. Calm down. Calm down. I know y'all get to, y'all love those presets, but calm down. Anyway, so you've got your thing here, right? And you've changed your baseline. You've put your motherboard on here and you've changed your baseline. What does that mean in the long term? What is the overall implication of that? Well, in my opinion, in the broadest sense, instead of having your room and whatever you're doing, if you're using the, uh, uh, what's it called, the, the jeweler's anvils to heat sink and cool your work down, as you work on here, you're never gonna get to that state, okay? And what that also means is that as you apply heat to the board via your hot air station, it's gonna take longer to cool down, and, and this is why people want the preheater, it's going to take you to that melting and wetting point much quicker. So if you guys watched my last video about the uh, about the, the soldering play ranges, then you're going to understand that I did that video on purpose. Because now, if you take and watch that video, you're going to understand that you have this play range to play with. Now, you understand also that you're starting at a baseline, that 70, whatever, whatever, whatever your ambient temperature is. It's not that much different from one another. You're taking that, you're bringing it up, right? And that concept of stopping using the heat to, to kill the heat and you know putting it on your 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 heat sink allows you to bring you back to safety. Okay, it's taking you home. It's taking you as far away from the danger as possible. This preheater keeps you in the battlefield. It keeps you out there the whole time. It's like you're out there, you're fine, blah, 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 doing your thing, you go behind the rock, you haven't got time to calm down. Okay, so no matter what, when you pull the heat off, it's going to take longer to cool down. Okay, and then when you apply the heat back to it, it's, it's literally just going to zoom right back in there and it's going to saturate very quickly. Okay, so I've taken a lot of time to sit here and explain the concept behind what's going on with this preheater, I think we should go ahead and just put it over here now and you can see what I'm talking about because you're changing the soldering play range of the entire situation. You must, must, must watch my other video on those soldering play ranges before you mess with your preheater. It's really important so you can understand some stuff, okay? It's all about timing, process. Y'all know what I'm getting at. Anyway, so. This, this is actually already preheated, uh, <laughs> so you know that's why I haven't really been you know grabbing and touching it. I can actually feel the heat radiating out here. Um, how do we derive our temperature for the preheater? Okay, first and foremost, different boards are going to use different alloys, right? They're going to use higher, they're going to use lower. Like if you're trying to separate the board of like a like any of the sandwich the, the apple sandwich stuff or even some of the newer samsung or huawei sandwich stuff everybody's got sandwich stuff now the temperature of the solder that goes around the interposer is going to be different than what's on the board that's something you're going to have to experiment with once you find out the actual like full-on melting temperature of what you're working with say let's just take an example and let's just stick to a normal board in a normal situation okay um 
So at that point, we all know you're looking 217, 220 on that lead-free ROHS that's on the board right now, okay? And let's just say that we want to give ourselves, because you, you got to decide how much extra playroom do you want? Where do you want to set your play range at? You're setting that now, right? So for me, I've always thought 140 degrees centigrade was a good play range for me if I was going to use a preheater on a situation like that. Um, normally for me, I would say I would use a preheater in a situation where I would probably use low melt in an ultra rare scenario uh, where I need to harvest a component or something that exists. There's maybe like one of it. Okay. Um, it's really hard for me to think of scenarios for this. Um, I, I would say that there's some scenarios for EMI shield removal that are very interesting to me that I'm looking at right now um, in terms of using a preheater. Those are, those are kind of interesting, uh, but they don't carry into the rest of the repair. Um, so you're giving yourself this play range and you're, I'm some kind of big dummy. I'm, I'm editing the video right now and I forgot to mention that sandwich boards that's, that's one of the main reasons I'm making the video. Sandwich boards, we just got done talking about it and I didn't even talk about how you're supposed to use it on it. Anyway, back to the video. Thinking to yourself, how many seconds do I wanna play in this range, right? So, like I said, I'm using 140. That means up to 217. Now, if, again, you watched that last video, you saw that it actually took 30 plus seconds to get you where you need to go. And that's where we're going to take it right here, right now. Just watch that video and then watch this one right after that. You're going to, you're going to understand. Okay. Um, so we've got our little preheater here. And we are going to go ahead and we are going to take this board. And it's not really going to take too much time for this thing to warm up. Ooh. Don't want to burn myself. Y'all know how it goes. We're making sure that we're getting direct contact with the board to the actual plate here. So you see here, it's it's on the board. It's not moving. It's it's touched down. Okay. Now I know I know this video is getting a little bit longer than normal, but preheaters, man, I got stuff to say. I got stuff to say. Just just hear me out here. Okay. We're gonna give this just a second to warm up. It's already pretty much warmed up. Okay. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in here and. I can tell you right now that this is going to happen a lot faster than if I was using the hot air alone. The problem is, okay, and hear me out here, the entire motherboard. And like I said, application specific, there are certain scenarios where you got to do this, but for the most part, the whole board has the temperature elevated now. It's, it's a more dangerous battlefield. It's not as safe. Okay, in my opinion. So what we're gonna do is we are also going to be taking some little hook tweezers here, because y'all know about them hook tweezers. If y'all wait till next week, I'm gonna teach you how to make them. It's gonna be real cool. You're gonna like it. You're gonna save yourself some money. And we're gonna go in here. Now, you need to watch out that you don't put your hand on the board or anywhere near it, because the whole area is warm now, okay? And we're gonna come in here. We're gonna get our hot air, just like we normally would. and. We're gonna use the exact same temperature we normally would. It's no big deal. We're gonna come in and we're gonna go hook around and we're gonna slightly lift. Now, here's the deal. We're hooked into a preheater. You can't lift the whole board. If you lift the whole preheater, you're gonna break some. You feel me? Don't do that, okay? You're gonna go in and you're gonna put a slight upward pressure. Slight, like how slight. All right, so I'm gonna come in here. I'm gonna grab this bad boy. Feel that slight upward pressure. We're gonna come in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh. That actually kind of popped up on me. Look at that. One, two, three, four. Ooh. You're gonna know something else. If you don't have a good hook in there or a good feel around what's going on, you can see even I'm I'm sitting here, I grab it, and you don't have that same instantaneous disconnect that you would with the drop method. It's not the same, okay? So we're gonna come back in here again. There we 
we go. Comes right up, okay? Now, you can see here that we do have those same perfect pull spots. So if we come down here, if you do this right, you can actually see down here, and you can see those little ring around the ring, letting you know that you got something off at a really good temperature. So let's go pick something else now. Let's say, let's just get this guy, okay? And I, I know it seems really tempting. You're seeing that, wow, that came off way faster. But remember, you're, you're playing a more dangerous game here. I'm gonna grab it, and we're gonna get this one up real nice, okay? We've got our parallel line theory. We're gonna come in on the center. We're gonna put a little upward pressure. There you go. It's really easy to use a preheater. It's understanding the preheater. It's, it's knowing that you are putting yourself in more danger. Now, like I said, the thing that I wanna close this out with is a compromise between me and preheaters. I recognize that preheaters are becoming more common. I understand that they're gonna be needed more for these application specific scenarios. So I'm gonna give them a chance. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give them a chance. And you know what? In the right scenario, you should too. So with all that being said, I really hope you learned something today. I know this video was a little bit longer than normal, but I had a lot of rant, I had a lot of raving to do. And for me, the more I talk, it just it just really means that I really care about what I'm talking about in that scenario. Um, so if if, if you really care about this stuff too, make sure you do leave a like on the video. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you share the video. That's that's always one of my favorites because when you share it, everybody gets to see it. Your social medias, your, your Twitters, your Facebook groups, all of that stuff. You know what I mean? It would make me very, very happy. So anyway, I will catch you next time. We did it. We made it through a whole nother video. In fact, it was, uh, it was the preheater video. And I swear... Y'all be asking so many times where the preheater video is, and there it is. We did it. We're here. So enjoy. Anyway, if uh, <laughs> um, if you did enjoy today's video, do me a favor. Head on down here. You guys see this cool little link, Art of Dot Repair. You can take it, throw it up in the address bar, hit enter, and that's going to give you a whole bunch of links. It's even going to give you a link to my tool store, so if you are new or... and. It's weird to even say it, but if you need a preheater, come on down. We're going to take good care of you. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is slap Art of Dot Repair in the address bar, hit go, and I will see you soon. So anyway, as I tend to say twice at the end of every video, I will catch you next time.